Man, I love this sport. Big time flush for Oscar Shibwe. What he's done speaks volumes. Garbaggi at three for top of Allen Fieldhouse. It's been rocking here tonight. What's passion? What's pain? Gotta lose before you gain. That's the game. It's all about fighting for me, and you gotta have heart. So much fun. So much fun. Well, Christine, we may not be in Kansas anymore, but game day is. Oh, <laughs> we are all ready, rolling. That is Lawrence, Kansas, and they are ready for an epic matchup. Look at the fans coming in with all those signs. You might think they're headed to a boy band concert, but no, no. Even better, they're headed to watch Reese, Jay, Seth, and Lafonso for college game day back out on the road. This is Countdown to College Game Day covered by State Farm. She's Christine Williamson. I'm Jason Fitz, and we are just getting rolling. She hates every one of these puns. <laughs> the puns, I can't. Thank you. He's just like clearly, you're, you like dad jokes. It's well, fun. I mean, I don't have kids, but you know, this, I'm, I'm the right age. So let's exactly. just say I'm going for it. Uh, look, this, uh, this is all coming because we're in the middle of a Nor'eastern, so maybe I'm like snow crazy. We had snow problem getting into the studio today. No, he today. did have a problem because he wore these shoes onto campus. This okay. is like what he walked in the snow with, I, with these tennis shoes on. Calculated error. Like cars in the garage, I think I'm fine, right? No worries. I get in the car, I drive to campus. I think I'll be fine. I park. And then I realize suddenly that I'm wearing the tennis shoes that I've got to wear inside. Huge calculated error because let me tell you, my feet are a level of wet that That's feet disgusting. shouldn't be. Like I should have so put the, the or, or like could have put, my, I don't know, an extra pair of socks. Didn't do any of that. You were smarter than I was. I wore is, snow boots inside and then changed are, into actual tennis shoes because course. that's what adults do. Yeah, so what, like, but snow boots are big and clunky and make a mess. No, like, so. mine are great. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, whatever you got to tell yourself. <laughs> All right. Uh, obviously, what we're going to get you caught up for is a huge day, a massive day, the single greatest day of college basketball games you may ever see in your life because it's SEC Big 12 Challenge Day, and that means all the way through the day you have great matchups. It starts at noon Eastern, number 19, LSU at TCU, and all the way down to 8 p.m. Eastern when you've had too much to drink and you're sitting there saying, oh, my God, the snow. Don't worry, college basketball will still give you all of the warm snuggles you need, Tennessee and Texas, all the way through the day on ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN. You, you know how to find it all the way across the board. So, let's bring in our buddy, Dallin Cuff. By the way, Dallin, you look dashing today. I mean, total so professional. Fresh on Dallin. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Every uh, you single know, time he's on the show, he's like, you look so good. Uh, it's true. <laughs> Fitz, I appreciate that. I need that right now. I, I need your hyperbole. I need your praise because we live in a tundra. And the level of salt <laughs> I have in my game right now. Now, I had to go buy boots last night. Spent the cheapest amount of money possible to buy winter boots because I don't have any. I'm ill-prepared. I'm freezing. Wait, how do you not have winter boots? I just said I'm ill-prepared. <laughs> Let's just start there. I've been for like the last year and a half since I moved here. I'm just salty. But now we've got some college basketball. I'm going to try to warm up and get better. We'll, be able to see how it goes. Now, Dallin, I'll just tell you, he's going to be working all day. He's going to be grinding all day. Mm -hmm. So you can watch him across the networks getting you ready for everything you need. And, Dallin, I know there's a lot of games to go through, but we thought we'd do something different. We thought we would utilize your expertise to solve some arguments between the two of us. So we're going to do it. We're going to play a little game. We're calling this Judge Dallin. So this is what we're oh, going to do. And am I getting paid like Judge Judy, though? <laughs> can I get the paycheck, please? <laughs> That's the first thing I said, too, is like, we know how much she makes now. I'm she trying to get you paid. Exactly. All right, so we're going to pick five games and what wow. Christine and I are going to do is given her love of the Big 12 and the, the fact that she covered it and given the fact that I lived in SEC country for 20 years I guess she'll make the Big 12 argument and I'll just scream SEC over and over again we will each make our debate you decide who wins the debate as the judge and then you tell us who's how the game's really going to play out you ready for this talent I'm pumped let's go okay Christine you get to go first and okay. let's pick uh, we'll start with Kentucky Kansas you feel good okay I feel great because okay. this is a very easy argument first oh, of all really at home Kansas is second of all there is a reason that Ochai Abaji started off the whole entire show. That was the first face that we saw because he is a National Player of the Year candidate, and he is the reason that Kansas is going to win this matchup. Why exactly? He has scored 20 or more points in five of the last six games. He only hit five of 17 shots last year when they played Kentucky, so he has something to prove in his senior season against UK. I have so much respect for your argument, Christine. 
but you're wrong because you're getting this whole thing twisted. Kansas is winning, but they're not dominant. Three straight wins by three points. And then the other side of this, while you talk about one player, let's talk about Kentucky, the entire team. The number one offensive rebounding team in the country, combined with the fact that they're the best three-point shooting team in the SEC. So, last time I checked, that means they shoot well and they get second shots well. That all together tells me that Kentucky is uh, Kentucky's going to be fine. The only thing that beats Kentucky is health, and they'll be healthy in this game. They're Dallin, what do you got? They're in the fog. Oh, this is interesting because I am a salty judge, as I mentioned. I'm going to require oh. a lot from my counselors to really step their game up, and, and I'm going to have to go with this beautiful picture here. For the first winner, it's going to be Christine. Now, this is a little bit by default. Because you just said they're going to be healthy. Uh, we don't know that yet. And I've yet to send my morning, usually morning to early afternoon text to Jay Billis to say, well, how's the health looking? Before Vegas finds out so I can make my wagers. But that hasn't <laughs> happened yet because the shootarounds haven't happened yet. So Ty Ty Washington's health is critical to this game. We saw Kentucky play this past week against Mississippi State, took them overtime to win. When Ty Ty's not in offensively, they are a different team. Now, he, he gives you something that they don't have outside of Severe Wheeler, a guy that can go create for himself and his teammates. And the difference between him and Wheeler is he can get to the rim and finish more consistently over and around guys. We've seen that Auburn game when he went down there. That was the turning point in that game. They were up nine at that point in time. They go on to lose the game. So. His health is critical. Kansas is at home. You mentioned Abaji, Christine. He, he is the National Player of the Year candidate that, that's on that team. He's outstanding. He makes every big play for them late. Defensively, they have some issues. If Ty Ty plays, Kentucky can win, but he's got to be 100%. So I'm going at home, at the fog. KU wins the game in a really tight, fun game. Yeah, yes. all I know is I spent all day yesterday watching court cam for nothing. I'm, I'm, I've lost the first one. All right, it's next up, Oklahoma versus here. Auburn. Let's go. Stay positive, I mean, let's, go, let, let's go, Christine. What do you got? Oklahoma okay. versus number one Auburn. Here's, what do you got? Here's the thing. This one isn't going to make sense. It's not going to make sense after Oklahoma wins because, like you said, Auburn is the number one team in the country. But, however, uh, Oklahoma is the best in the Big 12 from the field, which puts them – among the best in the nation in field goal percentage. So if they shoot more than 50% from the field, because they're 10 and one, when they shoot more than 50% from the field, they could win. And um, yeah, so they're going to get this one against Auburn. I don't know. Okay, let's just play a game called Never Have I Ever. And if it's Never Have I Ever beaten the number one team in the country, Oklahoma's drinking because they've never done it. So why is this suddenly going to be the time? And everything that Christine just told you about how they manufacture offense would be fine if it weren't for the fact that Auburn is the most stout interior defense that they will have faced. They don't shoot well from the outside and they're not going to have the opportunity to manufacture points against this Auburn team. Um, co combine that with the fact that Oklahoma can be turnover prone. Auburn rolls in this one. Judge? Uh, I hate to do this, especially because the picture has you this great blank eating grin on your face. But here we go. Uh, yeah. Fitz is the winner here. But this is almost by default here, folks. This is a tough – this is like Christine was handed a case – where there's blood all over the guy's hands. He was, he's caught in the scene. And they said, you know, who did this? And he's like, well, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. That, that's not really going to work out here. The problem is Auburn's just a better team. They're at home. It's the toughest environment in the SEC. You have potentially the number one pick in the NBA draft and Jabari Smith. Yes, they're coming off a road game in Missouri with that first number one time, first time they were ever number one team in the nation. And they battled. And Smith had it, didn't have a great game. You know, uneasy is the head that wears the crown with that number one. We get it. But he's still outstanding. He will be better at home. Walker Kessler is one of the best. Uh, rim protectors in the country. This may be the, is the best front court in the nation, coupled with great guards around them. They play at pace. And Oklahoma, they're not going to be able to slow them down enough. They're going to try to grind this thing down, but the SEC, I mean, excuse me, playing at Auburn right now is the best venue in the SEC, one of the best in the country. They are number one in the nation. They're nine and a half point favorites. I'm not sure they cover that, but I do think they win this game quite comfortably by a couple possessions, and they could even cover just because they're just that good. And Oklahoma's good. They're a tournament team, but this is an uphill battle. I'm going to have an uphill battle in this one. Uh, number four, Baylor versus Alabama. Christine, I love what do you got? Because I'm not even going to make a case for Baylor because it seems absolutely obvious. They're defend defending national champions. I'm going to make a case for not Alabama. Why? Because Alabama just lost to Georgia. Georgia hadn't won one SEC game until Alabama blew a nine-point lead and then handed them their first win in the SEC. Nate Oates says that they aren't mentally tough and they have to play Baylor. So if they're not mentally tough, how are they going to win this one? Look, I got two words for you. Nick Saban. Oh, wait, that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay, how about this one? How about this one? An elephant is always going to beat a bear, right? Like, that's my next argument. That's actually in this. untrue. I, I, am, I am grasping at straws. But I will say this. Alabama's battle-tested. They have four wins over AP top 25 teams. That has to mean something. They have performed well against good opponents. Yes, they have been cold of late, but before their recent shooting slump, they were shooting really well. So if you take the last three games and say, hey, they're just a little icy, they break through the ice, the, the elephant beats the bear, and I suddenly win the argument. 
Judge? I'll tell you what. I think both of you guys brought it. Christine, very much lawyerly. It doesn't have to be. It's not Alabama. Very, very legal argument. <laughs> You're bringing out bears and elephants and all types of stuff, Fitz. <laughs> The problem is, it's just a mismatch again. So you got to huh. go with Christine, but I really respect your effort there. If Alabama w hasn't been so bad on defense, which they have been, then I would give you the benefit of the doubt, Fitz. I would give you the win, because I liked your argument, like I said. But defensively, they've just been a mess, man. And yes, they have beat Houston. Yes, they have beat Gonzaga. But that was earlier in the year. Th th they have to have be committed on the defensive end of the court. They have to rotate. They have to communicate. They have to be connected, which they have not been. They've lost four of six, and that end of the floor is not that not up the end of the bargain. Now, Baylor offensively has had their struggles at times. James Akinjo's health is still a concern. Will he be 100%? Will, will LJ Cryer and Flagler play well? That said, when you have a team that's struggling off defensively, this helps Baylor's deep offense, which has been up and down a little bit. Playing in Tuscaloosa will be a difference here. I do think this is going to be a closer game than, thinks, than folks think, but I do think Baylor wins this game, though. Not sure I like this judge at all. West Virginia, Arkansas. What, what do you got? Christine's I'm dancing. I'm obviously going for the Mountain Mama, um, and there is a reason why. Now, here's the thing. West Virginia hasn't been playing well as of late. They have lost four in a row, but three of those games came against twop, twop, top 20. Ooh, we're speaking French now. <laughs> yeah, that's a bonus point. What does that word mean? I don't even know. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Against top 20 teams. But here's the thing. It is West Virginia, right? We know that Bob Huggins is a huge defensive guy. They have been forcing 16 and a half turnovers. So I feel like Press Virginia can figure this one out. Okay, you keep referencing songs, but it's the wrong one because what you should be singing is Free Fallen, right? That is what West Virginia Virginia's doing right now. They're free fall and they are not you playing are well key. offensively <laughs> at all. Okay, so at some point you got to look at this and say, I'm talking about an Arkansas team that has won five straight games and in the process of winning that, they've held each of their opponents under 40% shooting. You want to talk about playing defense. That's what Arkansas is doing right now against a West Virginia team that can't find the broadside of a barn for a bucket? No! Boo. This is an Arkansas opportunity. Judge, what you got? Uh, I, I will say this, Counselor. Would you like to rephrase your, your song and hit your key right, please? No, 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 I feel good about it. It was bad. I feel oh, good man. about you it. You might lose based on that. That no. was really that bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I wanted you to correct. redo it. You're going to argue with the judge, but I will give it to you anyway. <laughs> Bear in mind now, it's 2-2. Two, two. It's 2-2. Two, two. You may pay for that uh, in subordination and not Son give me the key that I Son of a biscuit. Uh, the reason Arkansas is going to win, you touched on it. Defensive, they have been much better. They've won five straight. Um, they're defending at a high level. They're playing a little more confidence. Off, It's helping their offense to get out and transition and score. And they're playing, obviously, they're playing in SEC teams that are good. And WVU, though is a team that has really good guards and Taz Sherman and, and McNeil, but they, sometimes there's so much reliant on those guys. And last thing, you know, for, last, last thing I want to mention here, I've called a bunch of games at Arkansas. When they start doing the Woo Pig Suey, it is uncomfortable. <laughs> it, it is intense, and it's quite uncomfortable for some of us. So I was like, well, that, that's a tough place to go and play. 20,000 at Bud Walton. That arena is going to be packed. It's going to be intense. I do think Arkansas wins, and they continue playing in good form, and WV, WVU continues their struggling form. That means we're tied, and yeah. we've got one more. Number 18, Tennessee versus <sighs> Texas. Okay, here's the thing. I've been a fan of Chris Beards since he was at Texas Tech, and he does these things called fireside chats where he sits down and he has conversations before his matchups. Guess who he had the fireside chat with this week? Coach Rick Barnes of Tennessee, and Coach Rick Barnes is getting recognized before this game, and I'm hoping it causes everybody to be so concerned about what's going on with their that Tennessee basketball does not come out and play. So here's the thing that's also to keep in mind, Tennessee is two and three on the road, and I do not trust that they are going to go to Texas in Austin and lose to Chris Beard and the Longhorns. This is going to be a tough defensive battle from both sides. Neither offense has really clicked for a while. And when you talk tough defensive battle, to me, that gives you the opportunity when guys are playing intensively, intense, I should say, intensely defensively, then that gives you the opportunity to go to the line. The luckiest stat of the year to me so far is that Texas opponents are shooting the second worst free throw percentage of any group of opponents in the country. That's part of how Texas has gotten the wins they've gotten. If Tennessee can hit their free throws, which I think they can, they win this basketball game. Judge Dallin, help me here. Wow. Uh, this is for all the, all the marbles, too. And I will say, I like both your research. I think you, you get to burn up some good stats there. Fitz, Christine, you went to fireside chats. <sighs> I have to go with Christine Williamson now. Oh, this, um, is, this is whole. Remember this the insubordination, <laughs> Counselor. When I ask you for something, you give it to me. Congratulations, Christine. Thank you. Here's the thing, though, I will say. Take the under. There are going to be so many missed shots in this freaking game. I, I, if you like offense, this may not be your best, your yeah. most entertaining game. Both these teams can really struggle to score. Tennessee's done it, whether it's home or road. Texas, it, at times, like last week, they went on a 10-minute scoreless streak in a game, and that was at home. Like, then when you look at both these teams, though, they are defensively stout. They can get after you. Their guard play has to be good, particularly for Tennessee to win this game. But I'm kind of leaning Texas because they are at home. I think it's going to be a grinded out, punishing, physical game, low scoring, like I said. 
and Texas finds a ways to edge this thing at the very end through some of their senior guards. I take back everything I said about how good looking you are, and I'd like to do an ESPN investigation into judicial bribery. <laughs> Obviously, that's the only thing. Christine Judge just Dallas. put me a couple little cash before I should I mean, say. It was some legality. I'm here trying no, to get you that, that $40 million dollar a year bag from Judge Judy, and you're over here. Well, I don't know. If you would have told judge. me that before, then I would have probably leaned your way. Dallin, we, we appreciate your great insight, and uh, we appreciate you coming in. Stay safe and stay warm in all of the cold, my friend. We live in a tundra. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right, don't forget college game day coming from Lawrence, Kansas. Today, the crowd's getting ready for Reese, Seth, Jay, and LaFonzo at the top of the hour on ESPN. If you're watching us in the ESPN app, you can just hang out right here, and you can watch it. Look at the signs. They are all getting hyped for this one. Oh my goodness. Wow, that was a beautiful <laughs> note. Thank you so much for hitting that for us. Uh, it is time for Surprisingly Great Assist. Uh, brought to you by State Farm and of course it's all about assists. So we're going to look at Syracuse versus Duke and Jesse Edwards gets the rebound and goes behind the back to Jimmy Beheim, mm. who lays it in. I feel like we're just singing today. That's that's what's going to happen. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> to, the next one, Toledo versus Ohio, and Raheem Moss steals the pass, throws it off of the glass for Cedric Milner Jr., who puts the thing down. I mean, this is so effortless, by the way. Up, up, and away! Yeah, I mean, that was beautiful. He's also that, I mean, I feel like when you can do the tricks, it makes it beautiful. Duke versus UNC, Anya Poole to Alyssa Utsby with, by, by the way, we've seen these two before with, on this segment. Mm. Cutting to the hoop, hits her for the bucket, and she gets the and one. Mm. That's just a nice cut, too. All of that is perfect. Exactly. All right, Boston College versus Wake Forest. Carter Witt gets the steal and dishes behind the back to Matthew Marsh for the fast break, break dunk. And I'm just like, the flow. Oh, the lettuce is, is it's a delight. It's like the most beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful parts of this, honestly. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Like, you got that hair, you let that hair flow. Exactly. All right, Ole Miss versus South Carolina and Victoria Saxton with the quick pass to Aaliyah Boston in traffic for the bucket and the foul. And guess who's in the, in the stands? Asia Wilson is there. She loved it. She loved to see it. I love to see every ounce of that. That is a great play. And you know what? While you're getting started with this, let's take a look at some of the best in case you missed a video. Oh my goodness gracious, no. That's Davidson fans decked out in Speedos. That's that's going to be me in about an hour and a half sitting by the window in my house just showing everybody as they drive through the snow. Are you also going to not be in sync? And like the guy in... The, I'm like, more of a backstreet guy anyway. <laughs> the, guy, it. the one guy like is trying but like can't can't get with the rhythm. Well, he I mean, he, yeah, there is like a little bit of a like weird look at the guy in front of you and you guys can all go Yeah, like same let's pattern. all stay on the same page. You guys are weird. I don't Know what's going on. All right, this is not weird. This is absolutely precious. This is halftime at Loyola Chicago. And he is the oh I God. don't know if actually if it's a he or she, but I love him. Her. Him. They? We'll just go it's with him. it. I mean, all I know is that that is a an amazing, amazing <laughs> oh ability goodness, so to balance. Speaking of amazing, how about this? I mean, you got Northern Kentucky with the mascot dance. Look out, BTS. No. Finally, look, you got Peyton Manatee on your left, Yao Flamingo in the center, and Dennis Frogman on the right. Like, if these guys don't end up on tour with somebody. I literally hate these kind of mascots. How do you hate them? Like, what is there to hate with They're that? They're weird. I mean, it's a it's a good little dance. Like, I feel like I could, you and I could do that. I feel like there's something. I'm not like, getting in one of those things. Those are weird. Wow. Elitist. All right, speaking of elite, here's the top 10 in the country entering today's game. And look at sitting at number one. That is right. You see Auburn at the top for the first time ever. War Eagle, the number one Auburn, taking on Oklahoma today, 2 Eastern on ESPN. And we are now joined, speaking of Auburn, by Auburn head coach Bruce Pearl. Thank you so much, Coach. Obviously, big day. You've got a lot going on. We appreciate your time joining us. And you're number one for the first time ever. What's the response been like from the fans of the community for this? Jason, Christine, good to be with you guys. Uh, it's been it's been great. Uh, you know, rankings matter. Uh, you know, who's got the who's got the number one business school? Who's got uh, you know South Carolina is the number one ranked women's basketball program. Everybody knows that. So while it's not March, uh, it's historic because it's never here happened here at Auburn in men's basketball, and and our, our fans in the jungle are are pretty excited about it. I want to talk about Jabari Smith because he's a freshman. He's a bucket getter. He's possibly the number one pick in the NBA draft. And I know you've been trying to tweak some things so that you can get the ball to Jabari more. What has it been like coaching him, a player at his caliber? Christine, it's been, it's been a joy. That's coach. He wants to get, he wants to be coached. He wants to be coached hard. 
Uh, but we told him coming in, look, be a great teammate um, and work really hard to get better. And, and, and that's all he's really done. And uh, the rest of it will take care of themselves. Some of those guys, when they're you know, in a lottery pick, they're paying attention to where they're going to get picked. And so it's just not, it, it, it's not a factor for Jabari. He's productive. Uh, he's, he can score at all three levels. Uh, he, in, he impacts the game with his defense uh, as well as his offense. And so, you know, a lot of times it's been, look, n- nine really good players out there on the floor. And sometimes the difference is we got number 10 and you don't. You've also got a couple of players on your roster in, in uh, Kessler and Green Jr. They came to you from the transfer portal. I don't think it's like we have to have transfer portal conversations across college sports. But when you're looking at it from a roster construction standpoint, how does the transfer portal change the way you approach your roster every year? Well, I, I think the, the bottom line, Jason, is you've got to have room at the end of every year to kind of shuffle the deck. And so it will force us to take fewer freshmen. Um, and we'll be really choosy with the freshmen that we take. Uh, you know, we had four guys come to us from the transfer portal. You know, Wendell Green and Zep, Zep, Zep Jasper in the backcourt, uh, along with Katie Johnson, uh, and then Walker Kessler. So those four guys are are, are five of our top six players. And so, um, you know, it, 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 this is the rule, and and you got to play by the rules. And um, and so, therefore, I think we'll, we'll be mixing in good high school, really good high school prospects uh, with transfers. And I think everybody will be doing that. So you know what's going to happen? Mid-major programs are going to get better high school players, and better high school players are going to grow and develop there for a year or two, and they're going to wind up transferring up. That's just sort of the way it's that's the way it's set up right now. All right, let's talk about Charles Barkley because he is the <laughs> Auburn basketball guy, and we know that he is very opinionated and he likes to put his opinions out there. So, how often are you getting blown up by what Charles Barkley thinks that he should that you should have done? Because he would have done it that way. No, Charles stays – he stays in his lane when it comes to coaching. <laughs> he does. Uh, you know what? Uh, it's so great, Christine, that you would associate Charles Barkley with Auburn because he does. He he wears it on his sleeve. There's a statue out in front of him. I mean, we know he played for the 76ers. We know he played for the Suns. He loved those teams. But he kind of owns Auburn, and we're grateful, you know, for it. i tell you what. I think part of the reason why um, there was a time in his life when it could have gone either way. Um, and that was when he was in either late in high school or at Auburn. And Auburn loved him, nurtured him, helped him grow, helped him grow up. And look at who he is now. I mean, literally, you know, he's, he's one of the best guys in the world, period. And everybody knows that. And uh, we're, we're glad that uh, he's an Auburn Tiger. Well, we're glad for a highlight you gave us. Christine and I both did a lot of work during the college football season. One of my favorite moments was this. Like, we all saw it on Twitter. Uh, you and the guys going out there. You're supporting Auburn football. Coach, you just – you did it right there. And everybody followed suit. So, the real question, you got the number one team in the country. Are we going to get some of those big boys from the football program out there taking their shirts off for you guys? Let me tell you something. Yes, we had that at the last game. There, there, there's Cam Newton jumping up in and giving us a little <laughs> bit of love. Another one of uh, uh, Auburn legends. Uh, yeah, that the last football game, uh, let's be the last basketball game against Kentucky. It was the Auburn football team that sat in the front row and 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 returned the favor. So, but I can tell you right now, my wife has made sure that I understand that America has seen quite enough of that body. <laughs> That's enough. Oh. That's enough. We love Coach, it. We love it. We love every second of it. And I'm, I'm just saying, the Auburn number one story this year is one of the coolest things we're watching yeah. in college basketball. On such a big day, we appreciate you taking the time to join us, Coach. Thanks so much for this, the time, and, and congratulations on the season so far. Okay, appreciate you guys. War Eagle. Best of luck. By the way, later today, number one, Auburn taking on Oklahoma, 2 Eastern on ESPN. All right, let's take a look at who's hooping. We start with Missouri State's Isaiah Mosley. Earlier this month, he went for 43 points, nine rebounds, and four assists in the Bears' one-point loss to Northern Iowa. Then he followed that up with 33 points against Southern Illinois and 32 points last week. Then he had 24 points in an easy home win over Illinois State on Wednesday and capped a ridiculous five-game stretch with 40 points and eight rebounds in an Woo! upset of Loyola Chicago. Eight, eight, so Dalen, 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 Mike, eight, Mike, eight, Mike, eight, eight, one, two. Let's four, five, six, Lee. seven. Junior at Kansas State, which means she's nowhere near 35 two, three, years old. Four, but five. she just broke a 35-year-old record of most points scored in a game. 61 points scored to lead her Wildcats with a dub over the 14th-ranked Sooner. She was five points away from scoring more points than the entire Oklahoma team. Woo! Okay? She almost beat...
And now we are so incredibly lucky to Woo! be joined by the record breaker herself, Aoka Lee, joining us on Countdown to College Game Day. And, you know, last week or on Sunday, you said you thought it was just going to be a typical Sunday. And then you went out and scored 61. So what was that like? What did it feel like to be in the zone like that? Um, yeah, it. Yeah, honestly, my mind was just on like just taking it one possession at a time and really just um, just continuing to like play hard with my teammates. I think it really just came from I think it started on defense and came from just us playing well together as a team. Um, yeah, so it was great. Um, yeah. All right, let's be real, Yoki. I'm, I'm not a professional at basically anything. So even if I'm playing a video game and I'm going off on somebody, I'm aware of the record. Were you, when you realized you were getting close to that moment, were you aware? What were your teammates saying with you? Yeah, um, I was not aware. Um, I've heard, like, our, um, like, communications guy was aware. Um, and some of our coaches were aware, but um, I had no idea really until after they announced it. And my teammates were just like, wow, like I have chills and all this <laughs> stuff. Um, yeah, um, they're great. But yeah, I wasn't, wasn't aware at the time. No. Okay, so then you found out. Um, you obviously were like, oh my goodness, I am amazing. Um, so I'd imagine there was like a little bit of a celebration after. I don't know if it's like, I mean, I don't know what you guys do. But, like, what did, what did you do? How did you celebrate? Yeah, um, really just pretty simple. Um, just went and got food with all my friends um, and just kind of hung out and then just went and got ice cream that night. It wasn't, wasn't anything too big. Um, <laughs> got doused with water in the locker room. Um, but, yeah, it was good. And what kind of ice cream? I mean, I got to ask. I know I have That's enough. That's actually a good question. What kind of ice cream are right. we going with? Right. Yeah, um, we went to Cold Stone and I got a uh, shake, like cookies and cream shake. All right. Cookies and cream is solid. And that's, 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 that's yeah. a solid yeah. Yeah. I, And I, look, yeah. I, I, I appreciate the celebratory ice cream. I think that's the way to go. Now, yeah. obviously in celebration, whenever things like this happen, tons of people reach out in the world. Like, have you had anybody cool or famous that's really hit you, that, that hit you up after your success? Yeah, um, I think Rachel Bannum was probably the biggest one, um, just with her being the like previous record holder, um, and also for Minnesota. I thought that was awesome. Um, yeah, I'd say that was probably the biggest one. I love that. Okay, so um, we're going to ask you some rapid-fire questions. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Rapid fire means like quick. We know that, right? Like we okay. have to do okay. short, yes. sweet, yes. succinct answers to these questions. She's put okay. so much pressure. How we got this? I'm I'm really this. Right. No, no pressure. No pressure at all. Okay, so what is your favorite pregame hype song? Okay. Um, Joker and a Thief. Okay. Do you want to um, perform it for people? I know that's not part of the rapid fire. Um, you know, I think they play it during our games. So if you want to come to our games, like, okay. you I like that. Good. That that's is good. well that's done. Good. Good. Okay. Okay. Who yeah. is the GOAT? Michael Jordan or LeBron James? Michael Jordan. Ooh. I love that. I love right, that. The answer. OG. The OG. Instagram or TikTok? <laughs> Um, Instagram. Okay. So you're not dancing on TikTok. Is that what you're saying? No. Okay. I respect yeah. so, I, so, my, my appreciation here is only growing. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Who is the GOAT in this matchup? Diana Taurasi or Candace Parker? Oh. Uh, Diana Taurasi. Okay. Okay. One That's on one. one yeah. What'd you say? That's a hard one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, one on one. Who wins? You or your brother? <laughs> Me. Oh, that's uh, that's good. She's like, do you know that I just dropped sixty one? Like, who who are we kidding here? Um, and then, where do you like to hang out on campus? Um, probably Redina's Coffee Shop. Okay. It's okay. a local, yeah, a local coffee shop. I love this, like coffee shop, cookies and cream, ice cream. Like, I feel like we're gonna be best friends. You know like, that's vibes. what's happening. You know the point. vibes. Well, thanks so much for joining us. We had a lot of fun, and hopefully, you drop sixty two next time. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Something good about rip this up. My brackets and all the brackets. You feel like you're here at Michigan State watching the game because of this guy right here. And that's why I love him. <laughs> that's Jimmy Baby. That's Jimmy Baby. You want a great environment? We got a great environment. Yes. I want to dance, but I'm going to get the dance, baby. <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? There was some baby with a capital A.
Dick Vitale is the heart and soul of college basketball. We all know it. we'd be remiss not to, to give him some love as he announced this week. He will not return to ESPN's Airways this season to rest his voice in preparation for vocal surgery. For so many of us that love college basketball, a part of why we love the sport is Dick Vitale. So we wanted to make sure that right. we gave him love and, and our best wishes. Yeah, we love you, Dick. All right, so what you need to do now is authenticate if you're watching in the app. Watch college basketball here all day long. Be sure to hang out at the top of the hour to watch all of the game day guys live. They are hanging out in Kansas. I can't make another Kansas pun, can I? No, that's no more. Don't. Like, we don't want to like, hear it. Nobody wants it. No. Okay, that's it. fine. <laughs> uh, just make sure you hang out with the guys. It is going to be a wild day. The SEC is going to beat the Big 12. That's what we know throughout that's the course of the day. False. She's so Christine false. Williamson. I'm Jason Fitz, and I'm leaving by throwing shade. Thanks for hanging out with us. Come back every single Saturday for Countdown to College Basketball.